We always encourage grant seekers to start their research by looking at government funding sources, as these sources can often provide most, if not all, the funding that you need. However, this organization is small and doesn't have the human or financial capacity to write a government grant. So while we always recommend you look at government funding opportunities first, today we'll just show you the depth and breadth of our U.S. charitable giving database. For this STEM expansion project, you may want to start your search by looking at both national funders, those that give in all 50 states, and funders that give specifically to Connecticut. Then you can select, under areas of interest, education, STEM education. And you get about 137 funders. And that's really too many to review. Your time is precious, so we need to narrow our results a bit. So under targeted populations, let's select minorities. This narrows our field to about nine results, and that's a good place to start. Now, let's take a closer look right here at Cox Charities. As you can see, this funder serves the entire state of Connecticut and has an interest in supporting education and youth, including mentorship, literacy, science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. So let's take an even closer look to see if this would really fit within their area of interest. We'll take a look at Northeast and focus on Connecticut. It looks as though since 2001, Cox has invested more than $6 million in a Cox Charities grants and in-kind support to organizations providing science, technology, engineering, arts, and math programming to youth throughout Connecticut, Ohio, and Rhode Island. So this is a perfect fit. Now, digging in a little bit more, we can see that Cox Charities Community Grants range between $5,000 and $12,000 and are given each year to deserving nonprofit organizations dedicated to STEAM education. So while they won't be able to cover the entire cost of the expansion, there'll be one that we want to save to our personal dashboard. And we can do that by jumping back to the actual profile and then clicking Save. And now we've saved it to our specific dashboard. Let's go back and do another quick search. This time, let's look under education and after-school, out-of-school programs. So we're going to start again by clicking on Connecticut. And then we're going to go ahead and click on National Grant Makers if across all states. And then, as I mentioned, we're going to go back into education and take a look at after-school, out-of-school programs. Let's try and find a funder who might be interested in supporting the costs of the tablets. And we're going to go ahead and look at types of support now. You can find that below targeted population. And we're going to click on equipment from here. It looks as though we have about 15 results. And most of these funders have not shown up in previous searches. Now we can narrow this down by removing national funders. So we'll click the minus sign next to USA. And now we're looking at a nice round 10 results. We can look at these potential funders first, then we can broaden it back out to national if we don't find what we need. But let's investigate one specific opportunity here. In fact, let's take a closer look at the new Alliance Foundation. Now this particular funder does highlight youth and education, and they provide funding for after school or summer programming, and also provide funding for programs and initiatives that expand educational opportunities. Now, looking at their giving profile, they fund up to about $25,000. Let's investigate them a little bit more closely. We can go ahead and click on their annual report right here. Now, looking at their annual report from 2020, we can see the organizations that they've funded and the amount awarded and the grant award description. This will help us determine a realistic amount of funding to request. And I definitely save them as a potential funder. Just to show you again how that works, we go back to their profile, scroll to the top, and then click Save. Now, we're doing pretty good with our list, but what if you don't come up with a strong set of potential funders? What do you do? To find additional funders, look at your project from some different angles, not using education as a major search term. Look at your project overall 
and determine if other factors will be impacted in your project. What other components are embedded in your project? Or ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? In other words, what other community needs are you attempting to address? Now, there are a lot of potential angles to look at in this project. For example, the project is helping address outcomes for at-risk youth. If we search under Connecticut funders and at-risk youth, which is also under social services, we get about nine new funders. Now, this project is encouraging youth in hands-on biodiversity and climate change activities. So we can also select Connecticut, and then under Environment and Animals, select Biodiversity. We get about six funders here. Or we can select Connecticut, and then under Environment and Animals, select Global Warming and Climate Change. And it looks as though we found nine new results. You want to be realistic, yet creative in your searches. Researching and finding new grant opportunities on GrantStation is easy and quick and fun. This initial search is what we call primary research. As a member of GrantStation, you'll learn all about secondary research as well, which is the next step in this efficient research process.